Today on Rain with me, Josh Smith, we're joined by one of the world's most in-demand models. She's also the star of Top Boy and she's a global ambassador for Joe Malone London. It's Adjua Aboa. I think what's so amazing about you and why it's so great to sit down with you and talk to you on World Mental Health Day is because you are such an advocate for having open eyes conversations mm. about mental health. And we all have very wide ranging, evolving relationship with mental health. It's up, it's down, it's bounced off the ground, mm-hmm. it's here, it's there. What do you think have been some turning points for you in your relationship with your mental health? Yeah, I mean, there's been a, oh, just a, like a multitude over the kind of the, the years since I kind of start firstly reached out for help and like got sober and started like piecing my life together um but I think most recently probably you know after the pandemic and the lockdowns it was just like I think I felt like I'd really figured it all out before COVID and I was in this kind of like I was just working lots I wasn't really necessarily I I didn't really have any personal Mm -hmm. life but I think because of like the work that I'd done previously, that was a point in which I got to where it kind of worked. And then suddenly it didn't work anymore. And then there was a resurgence of Black Lives Matter. I was like confronted with this new idea of identity. And it was just like, there have been so many moments where I've had to like reshape how I deal with my mental health. And I think work was quite a good distraction for me and something that I used and actually something that really worked. And I... I found something that I was passionate about, but I think that gets to a point where you're like, oh, you know what, it would be quite nice to like show up at a wedding. It mm. would be quite nice to have a personal life. It would be nice to have a relationship, you mm. know? So I think after that, I started kind of reshaping what like brought me joy. And I think joy is obviously something that's very much aligned with our mental health. Like, what is it that brings me joy? What, who are the people that I want to hang out with? Like, um, what jobs do I want to do? What brands do I want to be associated with? Like, it, yeah, it's endless, mm. to be quite honest. Like you said, I really do think World Mental Health Day is, like, every day. Mm. It's, like, it's something I think about. It's the first, my mood is the first thing I check in the mm. morning, you know? Same. Yeah, always. Every morning. Yeah, I'm like, how am I feeling? I'm like, today is not a good one. Sorry, yeah. everyone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Get yeah. ready. Yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm warning you yeah. already Look over to my boyfriend, I'm like... Yeah. <laughs> He's like... Yeah. <laughs> going out for the day now, so yeah. sorry. It's so bad. But, you know, it's like, yeah... Life is just so messy, so that mm. kind of... And one's mental health journey is couldn't be further from linear. So the fact is it's just ebbs and flows and we find ways of dealing with things and then, and then we're confronted with another thing, whether it be grief or identity or love or sex or... I mean, it's endless. Mm. So over the last couple of years, I, I definitely think I know myself pretty well. The way in which I deal with my mental health mm. is, a, is a lot different mm. from when, like, you know, I first got sober and mm. stuff like that. I think what you said is so amazing because there are going to be certain things that work for us at certain times yeah. and there going to be things that don't work for us at other times. For you, what have you found that really helps you and what have you found also doesn't necessarily help you and service you in the same yeah. way? Well, I think it's because also our stories change and mm. evolve and our, and we grow, so our perspective on things changes and and, you know it's so mad that you can look at a situation that happened like a few years ago and then with some age and wisdom you suddenly reframe it and you're like okay maybe it was my fault or maybe Mm. it was like you know there are different ways that we can look at things and it's um I think that's with age definitely I've started kind of really putting into place those like boundaries and knowing what's good for me and what's like not good for me I was talking to a friend the other day after I went to Glastonbury and it was like funny because sobriety for me is like easier and harder Mm. it's easier because it's like second nature it's like I don't even need to think about it I know how to have a good time without it I have I know who I am without Mm. it because I've been sober for like nearly eight years but it's harder because I actually cannot bear the bullshit Mm. like I don't even like the old me knew how to like fake it like I could like go into situations and just be like yeah yeah like listen to the chat Mm. you know get on with it now there's just I know myself so well it's like I mean my sister always says she has to like overcome my face is like it just says it all Mm. so it's 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 in that way it's got harder because I don't feel the need to test myself Mm. like I know where I feel good I know where I don't feel good so I mean in a sense actually 
there's a kind of new sort of loneliness where it's like I know I used to push myself to be part of things and now I just know that I have an inability to be part of it. Mm. Um, which is actually fine, mm. you know? It's about getting older, I think. It's, it's all good. Mm. I mean, someone like framed it quite well the other day. It was like, I think stepping back has been a really good thing for me. You know, I think our ego gets in the way and when I decided that I wanted to like give acting a shot there was definitely a big part of me with, that was like oh but I'm not going to be relevant I've mm. got the modelling I need to have my foot in that door like people are going to forget about me but like understanding that I can't do everything has also been a great like l you know learning lesson and and has opened up other doors and and I I don't know I, f I feel like I have more personal time and um, I have great people around me. Yeah, it's loads of things. Mm. It's like I could go on forever. Well, I think it's so interesting you touched on loneliness because I feel like we are part of a loneliness epidemic right now, yeah. which is a casualty of COVID, yeah. lockdowns, people being isolated, people also struggling to get back out there and also feel like they're true selves. And especially someone like you, you know, you're going through sobriety and you're actually having to work out who you are in new situations. Yeah. And like you're saying, that can be really lonely and I think mm. so many people can relate to having moments of loneliness every single person has yeah. them how have, the, how have you got yourself out of those lonely moments how have you dealt with that process yeah I mean I don't think people talk about it enough when mm. attached to sobriety like imagine you know it's almost like a grieving period you mourn like the people you can't hang out with the situations you can't be part of like it's just endless you mm. know and so I think and also there's a level that you'll, there are things that you just in no way can relate to anymore because you're so far from them or just like mentally and like chemically not there, you know? So you kind of, it is a bit lonely sometimes. But um, when I was younger, my loneliness was something, you know, it was an isolation, you know, it wasn't mm. a healthy one. It was, it was, it was one that kept me from asking for help because you can have so many amazing conversations with yourself where you mm. have so many moments of realization yeah and this podcast is all about having open honest conversations yeah. how empowering that can be yeah is there a conversation you can remember having that's really impacted you and really pushed you forward particularly in relation to your mental health yeah i think any conversations that i have with my girls you know that being like the girls talk community and and the, and the community in general are always very, they really kind of give me a new perspective on my mental health and, and what's going on. But I think personally, um, probably with my, my sister, actually, I think her, a conversation, and we had quite a few at the beginning when I first kind of like started dealing with my mental health, I think it was the first time, because you're going through it yourself mm -hmm. and like, you're feeling the pain. I think you forget that there are other people around you that are also mm. dealing with it. And especially as it being your younger sister, who's kind of being overshadowed in a way by like what's going on with you. Because your parents are like, you know, obviously, you know, at a loss of what to do. And, you know, and, and they're blaming themselves. You know, we know the like story. And so it was interesting speaking to her and, and understanding it from her point of view. Um, and that's something that I've kind of like taken on into like into all things I do. I think we, it gets so insular and obviously it is like something that's happening personally. Mm. But, you know, it does become quite like me, me, me. And it was very important for me to take a step back and be like, what is this actually doing to like the people around me? Mm. Um, and how is it hurting them? Mm. Um and get a little bit of kind of empathy and understanding around that. So that was a, a big learning lesson, I think, mm. in my like mental health. Do you think through that you've learned there's so much power in being vulnerable? Oh, yeah, 100%. I really don't think I could do anything I do. There's part of me, I don't think I have an inability to not kind of just be open mm. and genuine. There are days when I'm like, oh, I would like to just give like half-hearted answers. Yeah. But I just, I don't want to. I want whether it be an article in some like fashion magazine or a great podcast, mm. I want anyone who sees it to be like, that's who she is. Mm. And, um, and being vulnerable is just a part of who I am. Yeah. So it just comes, mm -hmm. you know, na quite naturally now. But it was something that I was deeply kind of 
I deeply resented when I was mm. younger. I was like, I wish I didn't kind of like bear the brunt of all this so much. And mm. I wish I could kind of just like brush it off on my shoulders. But it's like my vulnerability is what kind of connects me to people in a kind of a more deeper way, you know, because the work that I do with Girls Talk, there are so many situations and circumstances that I by no means will ever understand. But I have a great understanding of like emotion and vulnerability. Mm. Um, and that I think connects me because, yeah, I I can I can listen as well, mm. you know. And there's still so many assumptions yeah. around different aspects of mental health, especially with things like addiction, for instance. Yeah. Like we come so far in that discussion, but there's still so many times that stereotypes come into play exactly. in those situations. So have you yeah. found that? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, I have it. You know, even when just talking about when someone just talks about something, and I'm just like overhearing, and I just hear the way they talk about it, and the the lack of sympathy around that, you know. Mm. I met so many people throughout my, like, getting sober journey, my mental health journey. Like, you know, I was lucky enough to go to treatment, so I met a v mad variety of people there who'd been through all sorts of different things. So, you know, I'm not... It kind of kicks it out of you when you're, like, when you're forced to, like, really confront yourself. I'm actually quite lucky a lot of people, so sober people, say that, you know. I think... I'm quite lucky that I was, like, pushed to, like, deal with it now. Yeah. Pushed to, like, kind of pick apart any judgments I had towards other people. Pushed to, like, rip apart myself and put it all back together so that I could, like, look at things a bit differently. I am, like, I do, even though it was pretty mm. like, I'm pretty lucky, to be quite honest, that I've been given this chance to do things differently and to look at situations in a more kind of empathetic way actually do you feel like you got to a point now where you feel like your authentic self oh yeah 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 i can't really think of a time recently where i felt that i was like pretending i'm pretty genuinely myself most of the time because i've just found it it's all a lot easier when mm. i am actually putting up a pretense, a facade, like pretending or saying what I think someone wants me to say, trying to be clever, trying to say the right thing. Like, all I know how to do is, like, speak from, like, the heart. That's what I know how to do. I'm not, like, I don't know, like, big old words. I didn't pass any exams at school. I know, but I do know how to speak about the things that I love. So, and I know how to be myself. So, mm -hmm. and when I wasn't, wanting to be myself everything just felt far more difficult mm. um and a lot more painful and things definitely don't feel like that now mm. so i i i'm pretty sure that's to do with just like knowing myself better than i ever have done before yeah that's kind of the ultimate success in life yeah 100 percent. so much i'm stuff. so with you babe. i really do think it is like but that's the, the golden for me, ticket when i said i celebrated my 30th this year and i was like it was really emotional. It was like, I've done killer things. I've like, I'm so grateful for like all the amazing things that I've been able to do and the success and like buying my own hat. All of them is so great. But like the biggest achievement is like knowing myself better than I have before and like being surrounded by people who I like admire and, and, lo mm. and love and who like really care about me that is the ultimate is like getting to a place in my life where I really like have that one definitely like ticked yeah well I admire you so much no oh, thank been you it's been so nice. so great talking to you but we always end on this final question before you yeah, skip yeah. off what is it in the reign of your life what is the one rule you'll always live by what is that rule for you oh my god in the reign of my life what is the rule that I'll always live by my dad turned to me one day and I think it was when I, he suddenly, I think, started seeing the light back in my eyes and he was like, I was just waiting for you to realise what you were capable of achieving. And I would say, like, surround yourself by people. I surround myself with people who know my capability before I've even understood or know what it is. Because sometimes I think we're a little bit, like, mm. on the back burner and there are people around us who know what we're destined to be and the people how great we are and how kind we are and we think we're like pieces of shit, but actually um yeah my dad knew and so i love that and also like 
always take your makeup off before bed as a good yeah one. that's a that's yeah. a classic yeah. <laughs> <laughs> goes about saying that one yeah, exactly, so. thank you so much for watching this episode of Rain with me Josh Smith make sure to subscribe wherever you're watching this video right now for more